The thyroid is a gland that we all have, all human beings. It's situated at the front of the neck and people often describe it as having a butterfly shape. It has an important role in making thyroid hormone. So if you like, it's a factory for thyroid hormones that then circulate around the body and have a multitude of effects on a host of different body tissues. So if you're thinking about the brain, if you're thinking about the lungs, if you're thinking about the stomach, the intestines, liver, etc., cetera, um, of course, the skeleton, um, it has a key role in those and indeed all tissues. If I was asked to talk about thyroid problems, uh, uh, break it down, thyroid problems in young people, what happens when the thyroid gland uh, either doesn't make enough thyroid hormone or indeed makes too much. The um, first set of conditions, so-called hypothyroidism. The next set of conditions where you make too much called hyperthyroidism. People who are underactive, again, can be broken down into two main groups. That is individuals who have been underactive from uh, essentially day one. These are individuals who typically uh, have their hypothyroidism detected as a baby. And in the UK, there's a screening program that picks up babies who don't have a thyroid gland that works normally. They will be moving through life with their underactive thyroid gland on thyroid hormone replacement. But there are also a substantial number of young people who will develop a thyroid problem in later life, typically because of autoimmune thyroid disease. And they will be individuals who've had a normal thyroid gland when they were born, but the gland has subsequently been attacked and damaged by the body's immune system. And as a consequence, the thyroid gland has, um, has typically become underactive at a, a later stage of life. Now, both these groups of individuals, those who've had uh, an underactive thyroid gland from uh, early days, so-called congenital hypothyroidism, and those individuals who develop hypothyroidism at a later stage, autoimmune hypothyroidism. Both these groups of people are in the main treated very, very satisfactorily with uh, thyroid hormone replacement. And as a group, they do extremely well. More commonly, we see people with an overactive thyroid gland, so-called, typically it's a thing called a Graves hypothyroidism, where the antibodies that uh, of manufactured in someone with an autoimmune problem, they actually stimulate the gland to make excess thyroid hormone. And the treatment for these individuals uh, in a, um, involves first and foremost antithyroid drugs, and which can be administered for uh, varying periods of time, typically two or three years, but some people stay them on, on them for a long period of time. And for those individuals whose uh, overactivity is not if you like, satisfactorily addressed by uh, the antithyroid drugs in the short or long term, there is the option of definitive treatment with surgery or radioiodine, both of which effectively remove the thyroid gland and result in the individual requiring long-term thyroid hormone replacement. What you will find is that many of those individuals further down the line uh, will be individuals who've no longer got a thyroid gland, either because it's been removed surgically or with radioiodine and they're on long-term uh, thyroid hormone replacement. So I'd recommend that anybody who's even had a history of an overactive thyroid gland probably needs long-term thyroid function testing, even if it's just a blood test at the GP once a year, because we know that there, there is this long-term risk of underactivity. <laughs>